Hello, I'm Amari Jones, and today is Wednesday, February 18th. This is Caffeine TV, your daily news brief, here to take you through three headline numbers in just three minutes, giving you a different take on everything from housing policy to the Real Housewives. The first number up today is 5 million. That's the number of people who expected to begin to apply for deferred action under President Obama's immigration executive order issued back in November. Now, as we've spoken about here before, that order would have allowed the parents and the families of U.S. citizen children to remain in the United States unharassed, but their hopes were dashed on Monday when a federal judge down in Texas, surprise, surprise, Andrew Hannon issued an injunction of that order on a technicality saying that because President Obama hadn't allowed for a 90-day comment period on his immigration action that it was unconstitutional, throwing the immigration policy of the United States into turmoil yet again. Now, yesterday, President Obama spoke out and said his administration was going to appeal and that, quote, the law was on our side, close quote. But all of this just adds another layer of complexity on the immigration issue in Washington right now. That's because the Republican Congress is threatening to shut down the Department of Homeland Security unless President Obama takes out the funding for his immigration action. Now, none of this makes sense. The United States is under its greatest threat of terrorism in almost a decade from Al-Qaeda and now ISIS. And now the Republicans are threatening to shut down the Department of the United States that's supposed to protect the homeland from terrorism. Yep, that's right. The Republicans want to basically open the door to ISIS and Al-Qaeda and shut it to millions of de facto American citizens who've lived here for decades in peace. Now, with behavior like that, the United States is acting like the government's that many of those immigrants ran away from in the first place. The next number up today is 3,035. That's the number of people, according to the Death Penalty Information Center, who are on death row across the United States right now. And yesterday, Attorney General Eric Holder gave a speech before the National Press Club in which he said that those death sentences should be halted until the United States Supreme Court has a chance to rule on whether or not the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment. Now, the issue of the death penalty has come back to the fore after a string of botched executions over the past couple of years, including one in Oklahoma, which is where the case before the Supreme Court that it'll hear later this year originated. But there's a larger issue here besides the technicality of the death penalty. The United States is the only developed country in the world which still has the death penalty and like incarceration itself, it has a discriminatory black and brown face and so clearly needs to be reconsidered. The last number up today is 100,000. That's the number of children, according to the Valeris Project, who are forced into child sexual slavery in the United States each year. Those are basically people under the age of 18 who are coerced to have sex for profit. Now, it's euphemistically called trafficking, child sexual trafficking. And one of those people who may have been trafficked herself is Amber Rose, depending on the circumstances. And of course, Amber Rose, over the past couple of days, has been locked in an epic Twitter battle with the Kardashian family over who slept with more men for what and under what circumstances. Now, what's interesting is that this back and forth between these two sets of people is basically a battle between millionaires. All the women involved have seven figures in their bank account and have giant microphones as well able to spotlight attention on whatever they want, including child sexual trafficking like PBS is actually doing right now with their series, A Path Opens, but instead often focused on things like the size of their butts. And instead of focusing on the plight of actually powerless women and girls, hundreds of thousands of them, they're involved in an epic family feud amongst the rich and famous. Now, there's an open question of whether or not we'd actually even be talking about Amber Rose and the Kardashians today if they weren't going back and forth over essentially nothing. But until they unite and do something substantive like fight child sexual trafficking together, I guess we won't know.